It's a very pretty old building in a simple way. Looking very fortress-like. But those towers were typical, I think, of this era. Notice that the decorations in those niches are not statues, but large chunks of stone. Was that always the case? And why not the obligatory statue? Or did this celebrate geology? And how many forts have I been in that could emulate this, or vice versa? And the juxtaposition of the old and the stark, angular, new. What will the future be like 50 years, 100 years from now? What will the designs be like that are added to this complex? Notice on this face slabs of stone and yet interspersed with, no doubt, heroic pictures. And underneath these eaves, some pretty treatment. Panning the other side under the eaves, but also want to look at some detail I just noticed in the carvings. And here it looks like a monkey clinging to the corner. This, I think, a bird? No, maybe a sheep? And above one of these rock niches, and still farther up, where those family crests, and here it looks like lions leaning over the edge. Are they on back water spouts? I don't know whether this was a scepter or a tool, but that depicts a horse. This would have been right after about 15,000 years ago as the Ice Ages retracted from Europe. These were used for meat at the time, as they are in Iceland now. Apparently the hand axe was one of the first tools used by man, no big surprise, since a blunt rock would be a tool for breaking open something, for smashing bones to get at the marrow. This would have been a sophistication technologically of that, approximately 100,000 years old, obviously fishing. This was a piece of clay and it was used to stamp patterns, colorful patterns, maybe you put color inside of here, on skins. This is a wood-handled axe discovered when, from the period in Switzerland when people were still hunters and gatherers. It's quite sophisticated, isn't it? You wonder what this circle was for here. It's interesting, we always presume that goods placed in graves were for the benefit of the deceased in the afterlife. Could it be possible that they were put in there like we put stuff in new, under new buildings as time vaults? Could they have thought of the future? The remains from the Celtic period perhaps coins. You look at these belt buckles. Imagine this lower one here. A man might have used that all of his life. Look at the interesting detail in this one and it seems hinged. Don't know if it was or not. These items came to light when, as a result of glacier melt. Recently a Swiss couple was discovered for the same reason. These are stone crystals rock crystal, 6500 BC, wow.
150 to 50 BC bronze Negau, N-E-G-A-U, helmet. These were given by very wealthy Romans who were welcoming Roman consuls to their world. These massive belts of warriors, and they were not tall men, but they carried a lot of metal around just to fight with. And those headbands, I wonder if they were worn by women. They were worn by women, as were these on their belts and their hairpins. It shouldn't be surprising that all cultures of human intellect evolve the same kinds of devices for the same purposes. Just, they look different, different materials, different styles. Here they indicate that by implication that jewelry such as this and other items of value in border margins that were unsettled and in conflict, the wealthy buried their wealth. This was a tool used to scrape off the dirt after bathing and rubbing oil onto their skin. I've seen that before. Tentacle forceps in the first century AD. Interesting, around 400 AD, uh, the Roman Empire was collapsing, particularly in this area, which became very unsettled, uh, forcing many people to flee. Probably grinding stone, scythes, axes, scissors, chisel. These are lumps of, of coins that were melted down and they're mixed with charcoal fragments and then dumped in the, in the lakes. A defensive way of storing wealth, but how could that metal have the same wealth originally? Unless, I don't know. I'm guessing that these are a bronze or an iron. Yes, these are Roman bronze kettles or pails, probably made by slaves, but notice how almost perfect they are. You can see irregularity when you look at the dimensions. But apparently Celtic jewelry as well as weapons. And while the Romans called them barbarians, of course, they were far more sophisticated than that. That was just Caesar's way of deminimizing an entire culture. Same thing we did with the blacks, the Indians, and anybody else we didn't like. Probably a religious or cult figure. I assume that's a giant penis indicating the authority of the male organ and the male by implication. This depicts the man-made domestication of colors from the brown that was native to the horse to all the varieties of colors we see now. 645 BC is that bit.